Success isn't a map you can follow. It starts with a spark of curiosity for the unknown, dedication for the unlearned, and innovation to pave the way for the next generation of leaders. These are the makings of our entrepreneurs who are redefining this industry by bringing the real in real estate. Real people, real experiences, real excellence. Welcome to the Real Relentless podcast by Century 21 Tray Cities, a real estate brokerage in Eastern Washington. On this episode, we sit down with Mario Brown, a transplant from the Bay Area who talks about transitioning from a team of football champions to an equally fast-paced team of real estate professionals. All right, yeah. Mario Brown, I'm a new agent here at Century 21 Tri Cities, and I'm excited. I'm excited. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mario. So tell us a little bit about your background. So you grew up in the Bay Area. Sure did. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I grew up in the Bay Area, um, Berkeley, California, to be exact. Um, went to Bishop O'Dowd High School, played football, um, and eventually got a scholarship to Eastern Washington University, where I uh, got my degree in communications. Had my son, Peyton, who's seven. Won a national championship and played with uh, tons of Great players like Cooper Cup, uh, Super Bowl champion, um, Kendrick Bourne, Taiwan Jones, Vernon Adams, the list goes on and on. What position did you play? I played running back. Running back. It doesn't look like it now. <laughs> doesn't look like it now, but I uh, played running back, and uh, that, was, uh, that was my position. I had fun. I had fun. So transitioning from California to Washington State, how was that? It's been interesting. Um, you know, Washington State is it's its own place. I, I feel like there's no place like the Bay Area um, culturally. And just, you know, California is California. It's a beautiful place. But Washington has a lot to offer. I made a lot of good friends and connections out here. Um, specifically, you know, coming to the Tri-Cities and being new here. Um, it's interesting to just see how this place is growing visually from what I see. I mean... Word, or word is that we're getting a second Costco. So, you know, everybody loves Costco, all the VIP members. But uh, it's, it's, uh, it's nice out here. I uh, purchased a home and so was able to do that because anywhere else is it's challenging. Yeah. Before we move forward, I have to ask you who you're rooting for in the last Super Bowl. Ooh. Uh, you know, <laughs> Rightfully so, I will say, you know, I was rooting for Cooper Cup and, and, and the Rams and those guys. But uh, I definitely like, I like Joe Burrow's, his grit and his determination because I, I resonate with uh, the underdogs. And uh, so I was, I, was, I was going for both, but I'm glad Cooper Cup got it. You know, he's a, he's a good guy and a lot of people uh, are surprised by his, uh, his talent and how he performs on the field, but having a chance to play with him and be in a locker room with him, he's definitely deserving of everything. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So kind of going along that, the other day you compared selecting Century 21 right. to scouting universities to play football at. So right. can you kind of explain that again, how that's similar? Yeah, absolutely. So, <clears throat> so coming out of high school, um, you know, I, I can say it now, humbly, uh, that I was, you know, one of, one of the top players in the Bay Area. Um, again, had a lot of great players. And so I had the opportunity to select from a variety of schools uh, and eventually landed on Eastern Washington University. But with that, uh, just translating that to the business world, when I was going on, on these, uh, these visits to these various schools, you know, I looked at the culture and I looked at the facilities and the layout and really just looked at a place where I felt like would be home because that, that was going to be home for you know, the duration of my career and why I got my degree. And so um, I, I took that same approach, uh, looking at facilities um, and just the culture, you know, who, are, who you are around um, and the, the, the team and the leadership. And so, you know, my, and especially my first point of contact uh, was, was definitely a great first impression. And, um, you know, it's been, it's been wonderful. It's been wonderful. Nothing but warm welcomes. 
good to hear. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so as a fellow comm major. Okay. So what made you decide to go into communication? We're going to be really, really honest here. We're going to be really honest. So <clears throat> I was at a point where I had finished all of my undergraduate, you know, courses. And so once you do that, essentially, it, it, it's time for you to really pick a major. Um, and so I had met with my counselor and, you know, that was the situation where, okay, I finished all my undergraduate courses. Now it's time to pick a major, something I didn't really think about. Um, and so I encourage all of those who are in sports and uh, those who are looking to go into to college and further education, think about, you know, your interests and what it is that you might have an interest in aside from, from sports. And so, you know, communications was, was, a, was a degree in which my counselor recommended to, hey, here, why don't you start off here, take a couple classes, see how you like it, and eventually fell in love with it. You know, it's the art of communication. Um, and, you know, what really made it was my professors. Um, definitely my professors had a, a lasting impact on, on me and um, just throughout my time there. Uh, definitely built friendships. Shout out to Jeff Stafford over there at Eastern Washington University, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's how I that's how I landed in the the calm field. Yeah. I see. <laughs> <laughs> the calm field for sure. Uh huh. Okay, so you majored in communication, but you actually come from a long line of artists. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you've done your research. You've done your research. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, my whole family is very creative uh, in their own right, too. I would say a lot of it stems from my grandmother. Um, she's an artist. Her name is Mildred Howard, based in the Bay Area. Uh, she's been doing this, been doing art for a long time, a very long time. And so I had the privilege of growing up um, and going to various galleries and openings and meeting various artists. And you know, you, you go to my mother's house, she's got a collective of her own creative designs and things that she's inherited from my grandmother and so on and so forth. Um, and I would say it even goes back further than my grandmother. But you know, uh, my grandmother, that's, that's her career, that's what she does, she's still active. Recently, um, just flew back from New York, she had a, um, an opening uh, over in Battery Park for a piece that she had installed, which was a purple glass house. Um, and that's kind of her thing. So, you know, for me, when I look at homes and I think about space, um, I think that it is, I look at it from an artistic standpoint and eye, um, attention to detail. And so I, I really have a great appreciation for that. Yeah. And you have a son, right? I do, yeah. So does he does he get the art gene as well? You know he's he is into drawing. Um, it's funny because my grandmother. I was just on the phone with my grandmother and she was talking about how she just sent him an art set. Uh, he received it and so he's learning to draw faces now. Um, and so he's he definitely has he has a, an eye for art. And so we'll see we'll see where it goes. We, you know we'll see where it goes. I say try it all. I say try it all definitely. So you mentioned owning your own gallery maybe someday. One day, so yeah. What would that look like? What kind of art would you want to curate to put inside of it? I mean, honestly, I have an appreciation for, for all facets of art. Um, definitely, I, I really say it all, you know, from, from paintings to, to installations. Um, I think being able to curate uh, a space and bringing various artists to create some sort of like vibe would be would be interesting. So I can't say that there would be one one layout or one aspect of art that I would essentially take to. But uh, definitely, uh, if anybody's out there has a you know the same aspirations as I do as you know for for owning a gallery, definitely I would be interested in that. So one day, one day that is that is my other dream. One day. Yeah, 100%. Someday, and then Someday. tomorrow. And <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So aside from family, though, so who are some of your favorite artists? Ooh. Wow. Wow. Um, well, of course, my grandmother. One of, one of, my, one of my top. Um, Oliver Jackson. Um, Hung Lu, who just actually recently passed away, but she 
she's uh, she was very big in the art world. You know, did did some paintings for uh, like folks like Meryl Streep, uh, and so yeah, definitely definitely Hung Lu, um, my guy Dewey. Um, who else? There's a few, man. There's 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 so there's so many that you come across. I mean, even like people like Kehinde Wiley, you know, has done done portraits for you know Barack Obama. Um, my grandmother, she had an opportunity to teach him uh, at the San Francisco Art Institute, so that was pretty awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, a lot of there's there's a lot of folks. There's a lot of folks. So, yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna pivot back into real estate. All right, let's so pivot. So, what made you interested in in real estate? Um, a lot of things, honestly. Uh, I like connecting with people. Uh, oftentimes, I, people people you know they're like, man, you, you definitely talk to everybody, and so you know, just just the art of connecting, um, and then it's just an amazing thing when you find that you have some some of the same interests and. Uh, like attainments and so um, definitely that aspect providing service um, I worked at Trader Joe's I was a former manager at Trader Joe's which is you know pretty popular hopefully we get one here in the Tri-Cities um, but I had the opportunity to to be in a managerial position and with that you know I was able to just come across so many unique and beautiful individuals in which you know I was able to build relationships till this day um, from the general public all the way throughout the company um, and so that was definitely a, another factor because I like that aspect um, not being stagnant in one place so I definitely like driving um, often I take night drives you know listen to music and cruise so uh, just getting getting a feel for the lay of the land especially being in a new place having the opportunity to do that um, and not, not to be confined by a space um, definitely played a, played a big part. And then appreciation for just, you know, architecture and design, the space, all of it. <laughs> yeah. When we look at the whole spectrum of your career so far, and so starting with football right, and then going into communication mm -hmm. and then going into real estate, right? how has possibly football, you know, making split second decisions and working with a team and having a coach, how mm -hmm. does that sort of, are there any similarities as you're jumping into real estate? Yeah, 100%. Um, again, one of the things that I look at as I look at resources, I look at training, um, I look at, you know, again, the culture and the, the overall environment. And then, you know, I have my own personal goals that I want to achieve. And so how can how can joining, you know, this this team or any team, how can they help me to accomplish, you know, my goals as an individual? Um, and so, you know, just drawing from that experience, you know, you do have to be able to uh, adjust on the fly. You know, uh, you might go in with a game plan and sometimes it doesn't go accordingly. And so just keeping a positive attitude and staying optimistic and and, you know, really just leaning on your team. If you if you are having trouble or you need you need some assistance, being able to lean on your teammates and your coaches um, and leadership to, to help you navigate those those waters. And so um, there's there's so so many parallels if you want to kind of make those parallels uh, there's so much that you can draw from football is a great vehicle and definitely even greater for the lessons that it's taught me so 100 percent yeah so I'm talking about a team and yeah. meeting a ragtag team here mm -hmm. so what is your impression of the people you've met so far man well you know we got we got a got an awesome you know <laughs> We got an awesome person that's on the camera right now, or behind the camera, should I say. Um, but, you know, everybody's great. Everybody's great. When you walk in, um, you definitely feel welcome. You definitely feel welcome. And, you know, just this, the small things like, hey, would you like a water or coffee? You know, um, I mean, that's just that's just great hospitality. And, you know, every every question that I've had thus far has been answered and you know, if they didn't have the information right then and there, it's like I don't have the information, but I can get back to you, which is which is great. It goes into service, and that goes into the service that I you know want to provide 
going forward with clients is, you know, I may not have all the answers. I don't, I won't sit here and say that I know it all, uh, but I'm willing to learn and I'm willing to ask questions and find out. I get back to you. So um, everybody's awesome. I've been having a good time, you know, and uh, excited for the future and just taking the steps forward. So, yeah. And moving forward in real estate, you seem like a pretty confident guy. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's what my there. mom tells me. <laughs> <laughs> so where does that confidence come from and how do you foster that? I mean, you know, I think one of the beauties is just being yourself, being yourself. Don't, you know, don't get me wrong. Like I, I'm nervous, you know, and that's just full of transparency. You know, I think when you have nerves, it's because you care. You want to do, you want to do well, you want to do great. And so the the confidence is, is like a daily thing. It's like, you know, you might be a little nervous, but just know that you've got what it takes. Um, and so the biggest thing for me, and I just had this conversation with another individual, is that I love it when people say you're very personable. In this business here, because I, I want to do great, and I will, and I believe I will, um, it's also about being competent and understanding. And so that is why I ask so many questions. I'm not afraid to ask questions, because um, you don't know what you don't know. And so the only way to get better is to, to ask questions so that, you know, you, you do have the answers and you're able to pass that information along. And then with that builds the, the, the confidence. And so um, definitely right now, as, you, as you're watching me and listening to me, I haven't sealed the deal yet, which is okay, which is okay. But uh, definitely persevering stay in the course, leaning on my teammates, I, I feel really confident, um, especially having, you know, a great team behind me. So, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, as you're settling into the Tri-Cities, so mm -hmm. you're kind of becoming familiar with our region. Right. So what do you think that our community and our region has to offer as, as far as real estate and growth? Yeah. Real estate and growth, honestly, you know, with, with the market, um, it can be intimidating. It can be intimidating, especially if you only know Washington. Now, those who come from other areas that are, you know, more expensive, like California, where gas prices are $5, um, $5 a gallon, um, and housing, housing prices are, are very, very high, you know, it can seem far-fetched to, to, to think about home ownership. And I think... You know, with the Tri-Cities, it's a great opportunity for people to to shift this way and really get to know the lay of the land and the city and to know that even when in the market here, although, you know, it can be intimidating, you still have the ability to, to obtain and get into that first home. And I know here, you know, we're going to do everything that we can to, to make those dreams come true and make it a reality because uh, you don't want to you don't want to dream. You want to make it a reality. And so. Um, I definitely think it's a great place uh, for, for families, um, and I would say definitely to, to raise a family, it's, it's definitely the place, place to be friendly, um, and it's growing, it's growing. We've got entertainment, you know, got a lot of wine out here, uh, still, you still have the outdoor recreational aspect of it, you know, and so, and I'm still discovering myself. I'm still discovering myself, so I'm looking for the galleries. I'm looking for the food, um, and so yeah, I, I, I you know I live here now, so this is this is my community too. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know at the at the end of the day, you know I am, you know, willing to go to distance. Uh, kind of coin this phrase, and it's a, it's a play off of my last name, but it, you know, my personal value. So my last name is Brown, B-R-O-W-N. So with that, you know, my personal values are belief, relationships, ownership, creating win-wins, and navigation. The last one, navigation. So navigating this process and, you know, I would love to work with any and everybody out there and, um, you know, just staying positive and sending good vibes to, to everybody out there. Um, and yeah, I just, I'm excited. I'm excited to move forward. So yeah, We're go see 21. <laughs> yeah. 
All right, and lastly, so how can people find you? Oh man, all right. So you can find me at Mario Brown C21 and also Brown Edition. Uh, those are my Instagram handles, as well as on Twitter, Brown underscore edition, as well as Facebook, Brown edition. Uh, so, yeah, and you can also call me, uh, cell phone 509-498-1960, as well as mario.brown at c21-tc.com. You can email me. Holla. <laughs> That's it for this episode of the Real Relentless Podcast. Thank you for listening, and we hope you'll tune in next time.